Good morning, Maganana Maga. It's 6.30 in the morning here in Scotland and I'm still suffering from a little bit of jet lag. Um, so I woke up about half four, couldn't get back to sleep and I looked out the curtain and it's just a gorgeous day. So I thought that this is a perfect opportunity, a couple of hours before work, come down to the forest, to the beach, take the drone. It's cold, but it's uh, absolutely beautiful. Blue sky, low sun. Yeah, going to get some amazing footage down at the beach and forest. Because it's early morning, there's a bit of frost about, not too much, a little bit of ice. It's only about one degree Celsius and that sun looks amazing. It's still so low in the sky, it's absolutely blinding, but it's a gorgeous day. Absolutely stunning. Can't wait to get down there. This is the same walk I did last, uh, last time in the last vlog. Uh, but this time when we get to that uh, field with the horses we're going to take that little path down and that'll lead us to the ocean and what's quite amazing about Scotland in all honesty is it's actually got some of the nicest beaches in the world uh, it's just we don't have the climate for them which is partly why they're so nice because they're tourist free they don't get litter or anything like that um, I'll take you another day to show you the beaches in town they're really nice as well but yeah, the one down here is pretty special. It's always totally empty um, and it's, it's a pretty big beach. I've got the drone with me, so we'll see if we can get some drone shots. There's a beautiful house again. I love that place. I'm going to show it in every single vlog. You just get, at this time in the morning, an overwhelming sense of peace. It's just you and the birds. There's not going to be any cars here. There's not going to be anybody about at all. Um, it's just amazing really is. Okay, so that's us just turning down this little path now. So this takes us down to basically the beach in the forest. So yeah, we'll take a wee wander through the forest and then hit the beach. There are some people ahead just walking their dog. It's just going to be dog walkers at this time, getting their dogs a stretch. That's a collie. Collies need tons of exercise, so they need a big walk every day. They're just bundles of energy, those dogs, but they're gorgeous dogs, but difficult work. The house up ahead has a small field next to it that normally has a Highland cow, quite a big one as well. Highland cows are native to Scotland. You don't really get them anywhere else in the world. They're really interesting animals, big ginger, massive bull guys, massive horns. Uh, so hopefully I can show you that. If not, there is some Highland cows in town. Uh, we've got a hotel in town that's got some in a field next to it as well. Um, and there's always some there. So you will uh, see a Highland cow in this channel, either in this video or one of my future videos. Cute dog, I love collies. Yeah, so this forest we're about to enter is called the Culban and it stretches very, very far. Uh, we're basically just down here, King Steps. And this actually stretches for about uh, maybe 10 miles, maybe not quite 10 miles, but it goes right through to the next town, Forest. Um, and this area is, yeah, King Steps. So let's go check it out. Well, the sad news is this is where the Highland Cow normally is, is in one of these two fields. And he's not here. So I'll need to show you the Scottish Highland Cow another day. Can't see him. Uh, this is a massive house over here though. Sorry, I know I get so excited about houses these days. Uh, this house over here, I'll show you in a second. You see this path is now becoming sand. Just as we move down towards the beach, it's gone from like gravel. Still a bit gravelly, but it's just becoming more and more sandy as we head towards the coast. Yeah, that's a nice house. It's quite a new house. I think that was only built within like the last kind of 10 years or so, if my memory serves me right. But yeah, uh, that would be an amazing place to live. So we're just coming up to this uh, little section now. So we're going to turn right here. Uh, if I go straight, that takes me down to the ocean, but we're going to turn right here. And this on the right side is the start of the Culban Forest. And it's crazy how quick it changes. You just go from path to being basically in dense forest. And this is my favorite thing in Scotland is forests, pine forests. These trees, these are pine trees. If you've never experienced pine trees before, they smell incredible. Just basically if I was to sum up nature and a smell it would be these guys. They're tall skinny and evergreen so they never uh, they never turn um, bare or lose their green color. 
Oh, this is one of my happy places, wandering through this forest. I love it here. It's amazing. I just uh, wish I owned a dog, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, a bit of a tie. Uh, no, I love walking through here. It smells absolutely incredible. It's so peaceful. Just no drama. Life is life is good when you're wandering through a Scots pine forest at seven o'clock in the morning. Just going to follow this path down. Eventually, on the left-hand side, it connects to the beach. Uh, when we get to the beach, we'll use the drone, we'll check the ocean out. Uh, yeah, and get, get a good look at this place from the sky. I'm insanely lucky, but there's just no wind at all this morning. It's literally zero miles per hour. I can look at the top of the trees and they're not even moving, uh, which is great because the wind chill is what really gets you in Scotland. Don't get me wrong, it's cold, even though I'm wearing these kind of thick gloves. I can feel my fingertips are just completely numb and gone, but yeah, if there was any wind, the face would go as well. It would just not be, not be as pleasant. And in many ways, I'm so grateful Scotland is cold because if Scotland was a warmer country when you've got some of the nicest beaches in the world, nicest forests, uh, hills, all that kind of stuff, it would just be influx with tourists. Uh, and I'm really glad it's not, you know, it's, it's far more peaceful, there's no litter. And um, so yeah, the cold is a good thing and you have to wrap up warm. Check this little guy out. This has been here for years. Years and years ago, somebody made this little shelter out of uh, logs or, yeah, don't know if they're technically logs or big sticks, whatever you call them. Uh, and me and my friend Heather had a barbecue down there one day uh, about two years ago. And yeah, absolutely amazing. I'm not going to go down because it looks a bit wet and boggy, but yeah, very fun little unique way to spend some time, have a barbecue, get some drinks in you. I don't think we're too far from this wee uh, tire swing. So just a little bit further, but yeah, absolutely gorgeous. I've not seen a single person since I've come in here. Uh, and I remember I came here a couple of years ago, came geocaching with my one of my best friends, Cal Morris, lovely guy, full of life, just more so than myself. Not the slightest bit of social anxiety about him at all. And we were walking here and we came across a tent. Now, when you go walking through the woods and you come across a tent and it's got like litter outside and it looks, it's basically a homeless person, right? Which is, you know, very sad. Uh, but I was like kind of walking past quietly just to not disturb the guy inside. Carl Morris, no, not at all. Hello, are you there? <laughs> I was like, fuck, <laughs> excuse my French. I was like, geez, oh, dude, don't, what if he's a murderer? He's like, well, there's two of us. I'm like, yeah, but you might have a knife or something. Anyway, lovely guy. Just don't go walking in the woods with him. I know this is sounding like an advert for Scotland, this video, but it really is beautiful. And one amazing thing, another thing I'm very grateful for here is we just have no dangerous animals at all. There is nothing here that can do you any serious harm at all. If this was North America, you'd be worried about things like mountain lions or cougars or pumas. I think they're all the same thing, but anyway, you get my drift. There's no bears, there's no wolves, literally nothing. Um, and that makes it, <laughs> you know, it'd be cool to see those animals, but not face to face in a forest. Not sure if you can see it on camera, but that's the beach over there. You see all the sand, it's just the forest ends, then it's the ocean. We'll go down there in a wee minute. Something I love about this forest as well is because it's coastal, the ocean's just off to your left. If you ever need to go back, just follow, follow the ocean line. Um, I've got the worst sense of direction in the world, honestly. I, I struggle to find my own house at times. Um, I've just got no concept of direction. And if, if uh, sometimes in forests you can get turned around pretty easily or lost, uh, not here, not here, it's dead simple. Look at all these old leaves from last year. Totally lost our colour. Right, I can't find the tire swing, so we're going to head to the beach, which is just over there. Need to figure out how to get there. Back at the last path is probably the best place. I just walked through a spider web, right in the eyeball. Oh. And here we go. This is us leaving the forest, entering the beach kind of area. Although you have to walk through these kind of flats a little bit to get to the beach, but uh, they're very boggy is the only thing. So this path here is historically a nightmare. Uh, this kind of stuff here, 
I've actually come out further than I intended, so I need to go back this way. <laughs> the ground is so waterlogged here. I can just feel it's only a matter of time till I plunge, put my foot in the wrong area and it gets soaked, it just gets uh, totally drenched. But that's okay. It's not the end of the world. See how the forest just lines the left side of this and then it's just nothing. And then it's the beach. Absolutely incredible. God, trying to... Ooh. See, this is the thing, you need to jump across like this puddle uh, to there and you have no idea how the other side is. Uh, oh, maybe I can go up this way actually, <laughs> it would be a bit wiser. Ugh. Someone's used this for a fire, definitely. <laughs> I think we're coming up to the area that there's like wooden planks that you can use to cross to the beach. Sand it all because I don't want to have to walk through this bog just to get to the beach. Okay, good stuff. Looks like we can cross this way. And finally, go check out the ocean. The ocean is going to be so calm because there's no wind and that's rare. It's a rare in Scotland. Still need to cross this stuff. Just need to focus on not slipping is the main thing. I'm wearing my pretty expensive uh, winter jacket. There we go. Hey, and now you see the start of the sand. So that's the forest behind it we've just come out of. And now we're on this pristine, but this is the beach and as expected, completely empty. Wow, a pure sense of isolation. I'm going to head over that way. It's low tide just now. The ocean is so far away. Uh, when it's high tide, you can see this whole area is wet. This would be the ocean, but it's so like shallow that when the ocean retreats, it's literally about 800 meters back that way just now. And that's no joke. Um, how it gets out so far. Oh, I just got my feet just got soaked. Oh, that's why you don't vlog on a kind of half drenched beach. But anyway, yeah, the ocean's absolutely miles away, so I don't even think I'm going to bother going down to the shoreline because it's going to be an absolute trek to go over there. But I don't know if you can see behind me, there's this kind of sandbar behind me. Um, and it's a very famous kind of area because a lot of people camp there. And a lot of people get stuck there because when it's high tide, you can't get back to here. Um, and when it's low tide, you think you can just walk there and it's a really cool little place to camp so a lot of tourists go out there and camp and stuff like that then they need to get rescued uh, it's called the old bar I think um, yeah it's quite a dangerous place actually because you can get stuck there very very easily um, so later on today for example if you were over there just two three hundred meters you wouldn't be able to come back this way now this is a bit of a challenge there's kind of a small river here which I'm not going to be able to cross anywhere here. Maybe if I go down towards the ocean that way, I'll be able to cross better, but yeah, so cool, so cool. Okay, as we walk down towards the ocean, it's actually, oh, I just got soaked again. As we walk down towards the ocean, uh, you can see the sandbar a lot better. Uh, so this is the ocean here, but you see it's got that layer of sand there, just across there. That's the sandbar that you people camp on this little section over here, uh, where you see the kind of long grass, because it's raised. And then they get stuck there because this whole bit disappears when the tide comes back in. You know, my feet are now soaked, so I'm just going to jump across these little tons of these little streams because that main stream earlier has broken up but you can see it's still very much running water ah doesn't matter it's only water I've hit a point where I just don't care about my feet being wet because they're already soaked so I'm literally just plodding through this water now it's okay oh, god there we go Job done. We reached the nicer part of the beach. This is mildly annoying. The drone is not working. It's not working. It's saying charge or warm up battery. 
The battery's got charge in it, and I wouldn't have thought this is too cold, but I don't really have the time to try and fix this here, or the means, so I'll just take it home and charge it. Yeah, sorry guys, no drone footage today. Water's so clear here, like, it's got the yellow tint from the sand, but it's just, you can see the bottom perfectly. Oh, I'm so sorry, I don't know what happened with the drone. The, the drone was really cold, like it was colder than I was, I, I don't know why. But it was um, very, yeah, the battery just wouldn't start, I think it was too cold. I've never experienced that before. The only time I've ever experienced stuff malfunctioning from temperature is when it's too hot. This camera overheats in the Philippines sometimes, so does my phone. Uh, same with when I was living in Dubai, but yeah, sorry. Sorry guys and girls, no drone footage today. I'll come back another day and show you this place from the skies and there's other beaches in town as well. So yeah, it's maybe just a bit early in the morning, a bit chilly. One last thing just to end this video guys and girls is this behind me is a pond. This is here all the time and it attracts a lot of wildlife, particularly birds. So over that way is where we turned off the path earlier to walk into the forest. I'm just walking around this pond to start heading home. My alarm just went off, which means it's 7.30. Time to wake up basically and grab a shower. So better head back and get started with work. But yeah, that's been a cracking walk this morning. What, what an amazing way to start the day. All right, guys and girls, I'm gonna end this video here. I feel I've been rambling like crazy this video. So if you're still watching at this point, fair play to you and Marming Salamat, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Ingat po.